baby flew me out to um, L.A. Okay. I was in Beverly Hills at the Peninsula Hotel, mm -hmm. you know, and it was a it was an incredible time. Me and him did some songs together. Um, I was out in uh, Miami at the Hit Factory. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. And I remember at one point being in class and I, I you know, I got good grades in school because I was doing anything to please the people around me thinking that that was going to change. Like if I brought straight A's home, maybe they're going to stop using drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I would do whatever I could. And I finished my work early and I'm just writing. I'm writing a song. And um, my teacher saw what I was doing. She knew I wasn't, she thought I wasn't finished. So she took my book, you know, and she, when she read it, she was like, well, I want you to go and say this in, the, in front of the class as if it was something that I was going to be scared of. And that was the first time I remember performing in front of a class. And what I wrote about was, um, you know, what was going on in my household. And I was very, very young. And the class was like very emotional so there were some people who didn't even, didn't like, know. we didn't even know each other like that in school. But after that, a lot of people, it was it was like they Support, gravitated towards you. me. Support. Yeah, yeah. Like, damn, telling me what was going on in their house and all of that shit. The teacher apologized. We had a different type of relationship because of it. So music has always been something that kind of drew people to me because I'm, you know, I told you, I don't even really like doing mm -hmm, interviews. Mm -hmm. I don't like speaking that much. I'm a loner. But it brings people closer yeah. to me when I share, you when, know, when, part I, of when me. I hear you talk, it's like it's like what God showed you was that you're a leader. And what you said helped a lot of those kids in that class. Mm -hmm. And that's and you didn't even know it, the magnitude of what was about to happen. And neither did that teacher. Absolutely. Because, not. And that's that's powerful mm -hmm. because that's what happens a lot of times. I think that's what when, what happened with Joseph when, when his brothers did the wrong to him in the word. And it was mm -hmm. like what 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 you meant for evil for me, God, will turn it to good. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, you meant it as an evil thing. That's but a God fact. will change that and yeah. make it a good thing. And it helps so many people because he ended up helping a whole impoverished land. But mm -hmm. that's the way it be. Like we be thinking we we the guide in light, but God is the guide in light for us. Yeah. And we just be talking. So she probably, just like Steve Harvey said, you ain't gonna never be on TV as teachers told him, boy, go sit down back there and turn this paper. And and and, and she, she, what she's saying is motivating the situation. Yeah. And igniting the flame in somebody that's not gonna go out. So that's, when that happened to you, like after those kids came to you, you just talked to them, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I was always, um, I don't have a problem with sharing, but I have a problem with oversharing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not the one that's going to initiate it, but I, I'm an open book. You know what I mean? So I understood my role very early on and music played a big part in that because I feel like I can have a better conversation through my through my music mm -hmm. than I can, you verbally. know, just verbally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I knew what. I, I felt like I knew what my purpose was very, very early. Early. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and so after that incident, and it was a great experience, actually, but after that happened, how long was it before you did something else? Um, I mean, it never stopped. So you, it after never that, stopped. you just kept writing? Uh, I remember there was this show. I don't think I, I don't how know if I ever you said this that? before. That was... I don't know. I was in elementary school. So okay. I, yeah, that was That's real young. early. But because of that, and like I said, the teacher, she was impressed. She was impressed. So there was, um, y'all know, hold a copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. hold a copy, I believe is from New Orleans, okay. but I know that she had a TV show in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And I think it was called like hard copy with hold or some shit yeah. like that. And, um, soon after she came to the school, um, and she did some type of editorial or whatever on on the school, the particular school. And um, my teacher had me rapping. So that was the first time I was on TV on Hold a Copy show when it was going off. You know, I'm rapping when the credits. So it never stopped. It never, it never stopped. stopped. Wow. No. I, and they saw your gift. Everybody saw your gift. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Man, I think like you being from New Orleans, early on you end up signing to Cash Money. Mm 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 mm. No no you, no. I've had I've had a lot of um, reach out to you. Yeah, a lot of you talented. I've, so. I've worked with I've worked with Baby. I've worked with Wayne. I've worked with Juvenile. Um, 
Who else? I mean, cash money from in general. early on. Yeah, yeah, because from early on. You've been exposed because of all of that. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Why, why did you not sign to her? Um, I think it's important. Independence is important. You know what I mean? And, and you knew and, that and, even back then. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. When you come from a place, I think a lot of the, even the trust issues, some of the toxicity that I learned prevented me from doing certain mm-hmm. things too. Because of the trust issues, because of the foresight, you know what I mean? And at that time, um, like one of my, baby flew me out to um, LA. Okay. I was in Beverly Hills at the Peninsula Hotel, mm-hmm. you know, and it was a it was an incredible time. Me and him did some songs together. Um, I was out in uh, Miami at the Hit Factory, and I was working with Timberland at the time. And I saw Baby and um, and Slim, and they knew I was from New Orleans, so they was trying to get me from right? Timberland. <laughs> so it was a lot of things, but I also understood. You know, I'm telling y'all some deep shit about the things that I've experienced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, this is the music business. Mm-hmm. That shit that I'm sharing is is a part of me, and that's a part of my message. But when you enter into certain realms, they don't give a fuck about none of that. So I didn't want my what I wanted to do, this thing that had really saved me, to become this thing that was just about money i wanted to be able to put my shit out the way that i want to put it out and not have to censor it or become this other person just because this is the metrics Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i do pretty well for myself as an independent artist so my thing was just like maintain my integrity maintain my voice maintain my uniqueness don't let somebody just come in and plus the contracts was fucked up. <laughs> so I'm not saying that it I wasn't wouldn't sign. anything that was you were impressed yeah. with. Yeah, I'm not saying that I wouldn't sign cuz I definitely would and I have I, I actually signed to Universal okay. Records for for a brief period of time with Russell Simmons, but that was a very very unique deal. Okay. Russell Simmons gave me a licensing deal. So so I was able to still own exactly. all of my music. Yeah, and um and with that, I gained a relationship with him, and then I gained a relationship with Steve Rifkin, but they didn't take my music, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They still gave me 100% control over creativity, but they was able to place my music and place my name in rooms that I wasn't able to get in right. yet. So that was more important to me than to sign with somebody just for the sake of signing. But you, you, know what, you what you said is something dope, but... Uh, to even have the the understanding of a tra- contract say, being yeah. uh, 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 like it was shady or, or it didn't if it violated your publishing if it violated mm-hmm. things that you you really felt secure to but how did you understand how to even uh, you know see that that was what was going on because, because I was of, smart enough to get an attorney okay but a lot of people are <laughs> not and some you people get, but attorney, a lot of people are sometimes not sometimes those attorneys are crooked too I've yeah, heard stories about that too absolutely I, I I just know I'm favored I got a lot of favor on me you yeah. know what I mean yeah. and I'm not the most religious person at all like I'm from the streets and, I, and, and we didn't get into that but like there was a certain point of time where I kind of followed in the footsteps of my parents oh, and started hustling that's what and I was, getting in trouble. I was going to ask well, about we that. We can go back into it because mm-hmm. I, I really, yeah. I, like I said, I jumped into that cash money yeah. thing because she spoke of it, but mm-hmm. I really do want to hear the backstory because it's yeah. so important to the people to hear, okay, this is 3 d T phase one, phase two, mm-hmm. you know, and it's important because some little girl out there has got a dream, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. Some, some little dude out there is trying to figure it out mm-hmm. and the thing that that you say amplifies what's in them to help them. That's what this podcast is about. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.